Okay, that's the delivery entrance. When you approach this woman, she lowers her hood. You see that she is a Vernon born. Pure white skin with veins forming delicate traceries under her skin. Thin, growing sickly in her increasing age. She seems friendly enough, though. Greetings, Empire Soldier. I am Tiakura, mage and assistant to Solberg. The Master has made it clear that you are to be allowed through without harm at this point. Let me welcome you to my workshop. Please don't touch anything delicate. What do you do here? I assist Solberg in creating the next designs of Sentinel, improving their power, their reliability, the time they can function without receiving invigorating spells, to help the shield we are creating expand to all of Avernum. Who else works on the project? Malachite is in the West Tower. He maintains the Sentinels that already exist, repairs them, comforts their simple little magical minds. And then there is the creator, the one who carves them, Sorengard. She looks uncomfortable. Tell me about Sorengard. He made the Sentinels in the workshop in the Southwest Quadrant. I would rather not discuss it. Okay, excuse me. You really think you can make enough Sentinels for all of Avernum? You think that only the Empire can complete great works? Point. What sort of experiments do you perform? Many sorts, from testing the materials we would use to evaluating already completed sentinels. Say, evaluating sentinels is very difficult. A task for the brave. If you would help me, I could give you access to magic. Magic your empire masters might not give you. What do you think? I'd like to help. She looks at your wrist and rethinks her decision. Perhaps you will need to earn more trust before you can see more of our work. Can you teach me any magic? I can teach you a few spells. Nothing very powerful, you understand, and you will have to pay for my time. Terror and Prismatic Shield. Yeah, those could be useful. But not... Well, Prismatic Shield anyway, but not now. I would like to know more about Tranquility. Then ask Silberg. I won't share anything about her defenses. If you want to learn about those, attack us. You will find out what we can do soon enough. And I'll leave those closed. Solberg must be up here. Whoa, what the? What was that? There is a huge beast lurking in the upper halls of his tower. It looks like a hellhound, but it has a distinct feline grace. It's also several hundred pounds of solid claw and muscles. Yet it's not a mindless beast. It boldly walks up and inspects you. Then it says in a voice that sounds like two large rocks scraping together. I suppose the master would want me to watch you. I am... Um... It pauses and takes a deep breath, the better to display its contempt for what it's about to say. <sighs> I am Cheeseball too, loyal master to the ma loyal familiar to the master. Arm him, and I am the one who will feed on you. You're a, f you're a familiar? His magical animal friend, summoned by him to follow his orders, tolerate his idiocy, and be bored. Though there are benefits, I get a lot of meat. Usually dead invaders after the sentinels are done with them. Tell me about your master. Oh, the great and mighty Solberg, occupier of soft chairs and dreamer of impossible dreams. It is such an honor to be at the mercy of the whims of such as him. Impossible dreams? Ah, I don't think I will tell you any secrets. The master has told me all about the tricks of you surface types. Don't be all clever on me. You smell delicious. Uh, you don't sound like you care for Solberg. I am a proud creature. I don't have to like him. I only have to do everything he says instantly without question. Liking him? Not necessary. Cheeseball 2 lurks in the shadows, watching you for signs of misbehavior or weakness. You have an interesting name. Don't mock me, Two Legs. Solberg hasn't ordered me to not destroy you. I have a name. I will endure it. Why did Solberg give you that name? Sentimentality brought on by encroaching senility. Why the two? Did you have a, prede a predecessor? Yes. My poor prior familiar was a feline of the smaller, more delicate, more useless variety. What happened to Cheeseball? The familiar kept Solberg company in a miserable, horrible place, then watched over him for a while longer, then died. Recently, the master called me. I watch out for whatever foes and assassins he imagines. I get fed. It's a living. 
pity that she's ball passed away, but well, it was a cat. It was bound to happen eventually. And here, the great and mighty Solberg. You present the letter to Solberg. He takes the grimy piece of paper, reads it, snorts, crumples it up, and throws it away. I can't afford to let every ruffian into my lands. If this is the only reason you came here, you wasted your time. You meet the Archmage Solberg, a figure of legend, revered by these Avernites. He is sitting deep within his warren, reading a book. When you approach, he stands up and you get a good look at him. What you see is alarming. The Empire's limits on magic can be irritating, but they have their advantages. Like preventing things like this. This twitchy old man, hero to the cave dwellers, is one quarter undead. He has been using magic to extend his lifespan, and this always has a cost. His skin is pale and waxy. His hair is white and sparse. He is already part lich. To the extent that he can still show emotions, he is angry. An Empire soldier, here in the core of my fortress. Someone is going to answer for this. I am Solberg. I rule here. Show your paper of transit or be executed as a spy. Here are my papers of transit. Solberg snatches out of your hand, looks at them, and laughs. It's a dry, unnerving sound. <laughs> I should have seen this coming. I should not have been surprised. Of course, you had to be let through. That doesn't mean I won't have words with whoever allowed you in, but still. Why are you here? I'd like to hear it from your mouth. I am hunting for Doricus. Well, that makes you slightly less than an enemy to me. Doricus tried to kill Empress Prasak. She was the least objectionable of the people on the surface. Doricus is no friend of mine. Have you seen him? I have not. There has been no sign of him in my lands, and I have checked. I'm not saying that it is impossible to pass through here without my knowing, but it would be very difficult. So I am sure you would continue to travel. I encourage this. I want you to leave my lands, but before you go, there are things we must discuss. What did you want to discuss with me? He stares at the wall, considering how much to tell you. He idly scratches at the back of his hand with a long yellow fingernail. Little clouds of dried skin float down the, to the armrest of his chair. This land is tranquility. I am trying to create what a venom needs, a place of safety. From monsters, from the mad Venati, from hunger, and from your kind. Most of all from your kind. The mad Venati. Both the Vernum and the Empire have been stung by those unpredictable creatures. Were it not for their presence ever lurking under us, I could have gone to my rest years ago. From hunger. I would not speak of that. Ask something else. From the Empire. There are many of your kind that would crush us. You know that this is true. I spent years of precious life holed up in a tiny sulfurous pit hiding from Empire assassins. Never again. So what is your solution? You are in it. A stable, controlled population with the power to defend itself with overwhelming magic. This is the safest land in Avernum. All sentinels make it so. Or they will. But there is a problem. Do tell. It is a new creation with great potential, but there are problems. I am telling you about these problems so that the Empire does not think that I am attacking those who hunt the assassin. Tranquility has four quadrants. The sentinels in the quadrant to the southeast, the land you have to pass through to go farther into the northern frontier, have become... erratic. You may pass my lands. I would even give you an opal bracelet so that you could easily go southeast if I thought it would get you away from me faster. But the sentinels would attack you, and they are powerful. This is what you should know. So you aren't letting me pass until I solve your problem. Typical. Solberg frowns. Tiny cracks appear on his cheeks. I would not ask your kind for help. I would rather... He looks down at his thin limbs and waxy skin. I would rather continue to live this existence. I do not ask your help. However, I will not interfere with whatever steps you take to continue your travels. In fact, I might help you if you are interested. You have been in Avernum for a long time. He slumps slightly in his seat. For a moment you see how old he really is. It has been a long time since anyone asked. Everyone down here knows my story. It is ironic that the one interested in my tale is from the Empire. I have been in Avernum longer than practically anyone alive. I continue the fight for my land, even though sometimes I think I would rather rest. Why were you sent to Avernum? I was once a loyal citizen of the Empire like you. A wizard. 
one of several at the wrong end of a political disagreement. Since death in the night was not what we wanted, we came to Avernum instead. How, long, how have you fought for Avernum? I will not tell the whole tale of the black cavern filled with savage beasts, of clearing them out so that there was room for the humans to follow us, the fight to imprison Grahoth, the wars of the Nephilim, and the Slytherikai and Grahoth again, and then the Empire invaded and things became even worse. What did the Empire do? You are young. All that is good hasn't been crushed out of you. Don't worry, it will. The Empire excels at that. The Empire slaughtered many of us. Me, I had to flee to avoid the hordes of demonic assassins your people sent after me. I spent years in a miserable exile, hidden in a tiny tower, with none but my infuriating familiar for company. If we hadn't won the war with the help of the Venati, I might have ended my own torment then and there. Your, your familiar? A cat named Cheeseball. Long past, of course. I have since summoned a new familiar, one more suited to the dangers of the times. The Empire was responding to a real threat, the assassination of its Emperor. We didn't kill your wicked Emperor, Erica Redmark did, without consulting the rest of us. But I will not listen to this babble in my home. Come back when you will be can be polite. Okay. What happened after the war? First, I recovered. The time in the tower, the solitude, the sulfur, the heat. Ah, oh, the looks. Being shuffled aside, time passing. No, I cannot dwell in the past any more. I have a place here where the errors can be corrected, where I can develop a way to make Avernum safe at last. I have been indulging myself, and as a result, I have confided in one of your kind. Say your peace, soldier of the em enemy, and let us conclude our business. You have been prolonging your life. He holds up a hand and looks at it. It hangs there in the air, perfectly eerily still. The skin is dry, waxy, almost pure white, but you can't see the veins underneath it. I have used my power to continue in this world. I have a duty. I will not cease until it is discharged. How do you live longer? I am not so old and confused that I would share those secrets easily. It is not good for too many to live too long. Avernum is growing short of food as it is. And what is your duty? In the early days, the dark days, there was a young... A young... I just want to help to protect... I did not succeed. I think of the past, of those who died. For me to rest, to selfishly take my power away from my land, it would mean more deaths. Unjust, unnecessary. That does seem noble. I don't need your approval! You are part of what I am protecting against! I am sentimental and talkative in my old age. I need to watch that. We have more important things to discuss. I would like to learn some magic. I will not trade my secrets with your kind. My age does make me sentimental and weak, but not to this extent. Uh, I'd like to know more about tranquility. I am sure you would. I know that the Empire would like to discover the secrets of my network of defenses that will one day expand and keep us safe from you. The dangers of Vernum faces are many. I will solve them before I rest. Of course, any new creation has flaws, but I am confident in the future that they will be fixed. What sort of dangers do your sentinels keep away? All of them. Outside invaders are destroyed, and the more insidious but equally dangerous invaders are kept at a distance. What sort of invaders have you fought so far? All of them. Stray giants from the south, overly ambitious bandits from the west, creatures I have captured and released to test the sentinels, and if you go to the wrong place, they can fight you. Yes, the system is almost perfect. Who are the more insidious invaders? People. Ordinary people. These caves are fragile. They can only produce food for so many people, try as we might. Even magic has limits in this area. The Venati have the right idea, but we cannot adopt their solution. What do they do? They hibernate, locking themselves away for centuries once they have almost exhausted their caverns. They give us their lands time to regenerate. This is not a solution for us. So we must protect our lands by keeping too many people from staying here, and... I struggle to keep from talking. It is an effect of too much solitude, that I speak too freely in my old age. I even speak to the enemy. That weakness will be purged. We'll distill something else now. You don't believe Dorcas was here? I do not. For Dorcas and his rebels to have passed through here, he would have needed to evade my sentinels. All of them, even around the southern passage. 
I don't see how that would be possible. I want to go further into the northern frontier. Can you help me? It appears that I must. You can't stay here. I am bound by the papers to carry you carry to help you proceed. If I could, I would just wave you through. However, there is a problem. There has been sabotage. One of my trained trusted assistants has caused me to lose control of the Sentinels in the southeast quadrant. You will not be able to pass through that region without great danger unless control is regained. There is no way to slip through? No, and the defenses to the southeast towards the wilder parts of the frontier are my strongest. You can try to fight your way through, but I would not recommend it. Perhaps I can help you regain control. That is why I allowed you to reach me. Your effort can benefit us both. He gives you a bracelet. It is a band of iron set with a piece of onyx. You put it on. When you do, your crude bracelet crumbles into dust. There is a workshop in the southwest. The sentinels are maintained here, but much of the work that takes place in creating them happens there. And that is where the traitor is. Find what is causing the southeastern sentinels to go mad and stop it. If you have to kill the traitor, so much the better. What do you think is affecting the sentinels? I do not know, but I sense a malevolent presence. It sends out its will from the workshop. I believe that is the traitor. Go on. No. He saw my success. He knew th that the Empire... He is there now, in the workshop, working against me. Stop whatever is disturbing the Sentinels. If you have to kill Sorengard, I am agreeable. That is all. By the way, I need to pick up some crystals for Encantor Shanker. Solberg is surprised. You are working with her? She trusts you. I hope she learns from mistakes we have made in the past. He walks to his desk and fetches a small pouch of crystals. He gives it to you. I don't need anything else right now. Solberg returns to his book. This is one of Solberg's spellbooks. When you touch it, it gives you a powerful magical jolt. You jump away. Oh, Jesus! Yeah, we should not touch either of those. Okay, well... That conversation took a while. You can act, I can actually, uh, can probably help. Of course, helping with a wizard's experiments, what could possibly go wrong? That's the spirit. I have a new sentinel in the South Tower. I need to evaluate its defenses. That means I need you to hit it many times in different ways, very quickly. She describes a key to you and then points at the alcoves to the east. There is a box of keys in there. Fetch the correct key and enter the South Tower when you are prepared. Well, I think we'll do that, uh, probably in the next episode. You open the box, hoping to find exciting treasure, or at least a key to something interesting. You do find a key. In fact, you find hundreds of them. All shapes and sizes and materials all jumbled together. You look for the key to the South Tower that Tiakura described to you. After a few minutes of sorting, you find and take it. Well, we will take care of that in the next episode, because this one's gone on long enough. Next episode, we'll take a look in the South Tower, and we'll see if we can investigate what's in the East Tower here. Till then, I am Chester44, that is Darren, Thomas, Lena, and Sherry. This has been an Avernum 5 Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.